Hello! Today, the super awesome team members of Team 5 Prime to 3 Prime are going to teach you dudes how to make a median joining network. Let's begin with Mega. You see, there's a couple steps we got to take to prepare our files before we can make our super awesome figure. Mega is a program that allows us to align our raw sequence data. First, open up Mega 7. Great. Now, click the align button at the top left corner right here. Uh, clicking this button is going to give us some really exciting options. Uh, we're going to click Edit and Build Alignment. All right, we're making a new alignment, so let's keep this box here checked. Uh, click the heck out of that OK button. All right, uh, we're looking at DNA today, so let's pick that. Now we're grooving. Uh, alignment Explorer is up, so let's align. All right, so you want to you want to find your .dot fast or your .dot fasta file in your folder. It's super important to keep your folds organized, otherwise this part can be a real pain. Uh, the experienced and super awesome members of Team 5 Prime to 3 Prime suggest moving your folder that you intend to align to your desktop. It seems uh, to be easier to find from our incredible experience. Here we are. We're going to use this one here, our unaligned sequences. All right. Now, Look at all these nucleotides. Uh, as you can see, nothing here is aligned. We're going to have to fix that. They also might be different lengths, like these guys right here. These are some full genome samples. All right. So, all right, first we got to find them again. We're only looking at uh, HVS1. If you have any full uh, genome sequences, you're going to want to Go to position one of uh, 15,990. 15,990. It's going to bring us here. So we're going to click all of this. Hold shift. We're going to scroll our way all the way down to position one. Again, click all this. We're going to click uh, this X right up here. Delete that. That's going to shift that down. Awesome. Once you've completely trimmed everything, you're going to want to go to this little muscle icon up here. It's going to say align uh, with muscle. Um, if you want to do it through alignment, be sure to do muscle without codons. You don't want to use codons for this. So we're going to, once we're done trimming it, we're going to press align DNA. No, nothing selected for alignment. It'll select all for you. Then it's going to run this huge program, and through the power of editing, we're going to skip through this part. Look at all this science we got going on. So we just aligned our sequences, and this is what they look like. See, generally they all uh, are pretty much the same, but this is how we're able to spot um, any mutations. So. Let's take a minute, breathe, and, and look see what we got. So we have cases where when there should be C's, some T's show up for some, for some sequences. We have in the case of uh, this guy here, we seem to have an insertion. You can tell because um, it's reading it as a blank space for all the other sequences, but we have this kind of unique C for this sequence here. And this kind of holds true for some others here. We'll have some deletions here for some sequences. All right, looks like we got ourselves some uh, unique data. It's going to be really exciting to see what this will look like in a network. But to get us to our next step, uh, DNASP, we have to click data and export it as a Nexus file. All right, and that's it. Now we're going to be moving on to DNASP. All right, see you there. So DNASP is available online through the University of Barcelona. Like some of these programs, it works best on a PC. For others, such as Mac users, we use Wine. But Wine doesn't like DNASP, so you'll want to use an actual PC. When you open DNASP, click File, Open Data File, and select the Nexus file that you exported from Mega or got an email from your friend with the map. The file extension could be Nex or Nexus, so you may have to change the, what file type your computer is looking for. A window should pop up with information about your aligned data. Some of it may be, might be wrong, and that's why the next step is changing it. Close the info window. 
but to change the data, you'll need to press Data, then Format. A window will open called Nucleotide Sequence Format. Usually, DNASP will assume you're using nuclear data, which is diploid. Oh no! For mitochondrial DNA, you'll need to change it to haploid and change chromosomal to mitochondrial. Make sure those are right and make sure that DNA is selected, not RNA. But since, since we're making a network, all we need to do is export our RDF file, which will go into network itself. Go to File and Save Export Data. Select the Roll File Format and you'll be given a few options. Don't consider sites with gaps, remove in variable sites, and make sure to export as a roll data file, which is even labeled here as what you would need for network. Then click OK and save your file, and you have what you need to make your network. Once you've exported your RDF file, you'll get a sheet with all the haplotype information in DNASP. It lays out which of your sequences go into each of the numbered haplotypes. You can use this information in network to describe which populations feature each haplotype. For instance, haplotype 1 uses 102 sequences, including sequences 1, 5, and 13. Haplotype 2 uses 31 sequences, including 2 and 44. You can scroll down and see what those sequences are, and based on their labels, you'll be able to assign their populations a network. You'll just want to copy this information somewhere else so you can use it after you close DNASP. The first thing you're going to want to do before you make your network is download network. Go to www.pluxisengineering.com and click Network 5 to download it. In the downloaded folder, this file will appear as a .zip. In order to unzip it, you need to click on it. After that's done, click the file network.exe to run it. If you're a Mac user, you're going to have to run this program through Wine, as it is a Windows program. In the data entry heading at the top left screen, click Import RDF, DNA Nucleotide Data, and open your RDF file. Now we have to check for binarization. By clicking binarization, this program checks to see if there are two different mutations at the same location. Oh no, it looks like there is. Ooh. See here, at column 243, we have three nucleotides present. Here's how you fix it. First click on the column number and click duplicate character. You should see a new column appear on the left. We're going to rename this column 243A to keep track. The three nucleotides present in these two columns are C's, T's, and A's. In column 243A, we're going to change all the T's to C. And in column 243, we're going to change all the A's to C. This process might take a while. Let's check again to see if there's any more problems. Oh no, it looks like there still are. This might take a while again. Fair is over. It appears we've got them all, but let's check again. Great. You know that everything is completely binarized when all the letters turn to zeros and ones to show where the mutations are. And we're all set. Save this file. In the Calculate Network column at the top of the screen, click Network Calculations and Median Joining. Next, click File and open your newly edited .rdf file. Finally, click Calculate Network and save this file as the suggested .out format. One more step until our network is complete, dudes. Click on Draw Network, File, change the file type to .out and open your .out file, and voila! Just click OK. Do not modify the torso. And press Finalize. Now what the heck is this craziness?
All right, so let's go over a few tips on how we can uh, edit this here network. Um, so first off, we can zoom in here to see what's really going on, look at the connections between the nodes. And as we see, while these are pretty useful, these uh, mutations in red, they kind of clutter up the network. So let's switch that off. All right. You can also get rid of the median networks here, or the median vectors, rather. Uh, and once we're done changing the colors of these nodes here, we can get rid of the node names just to make it a little more neat. But for now, while we're still editing it, let's keep these node names on so we know what we're doing. A very important thing to note is that you don't want to change the length of any of these arms here. This is because the length of the arm shows how many mutations away one haplotype is from another. So if we want to look at haplotype 63 and haplotype 100 here, we switch back on these mutations. We can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six mutations that separate the two. So if we change the length, then we're changing what this is really showing. We don't want to do that. No. So what I'm saying is, if you don't highlight this line and you click on this guy, you can change the length, and that's no good. So if that ever happens, you want to press undo. Now, if you notice that turn that undo button here turned gray because you only undo the last thing that you did. So if you change the length of your arm here and don't press undo and do something else, then that's kind of stuck and you have to redo the network and we don't want to do that. So when you are changing the configuration of the arm, maybe even just to save space, you want to highlight the arm here, click the node, and then move it around. That way, the distance between the nodes don't change. All right, now when it gets to changing the colors of the nodes, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click here um, and it starts you off with two slices. If for, if for whatever reason this is divided between three populations, you're going to want to add a slice here. Just remember you started off with seven, I believe, uh, for this haplotype. Um, here, let's get rid of this. And, okay, yes, I was seven. So you're going to want to change this down to five so you know what you're dealing with. Let's say the first population has three samples for this haplotype. We'll change this to three. Uh, let's change this here to two. And let's just change this here to two. All right, awesome. Now you can change the color of these slices to get a better example. Uh, our teammate Emily loves uh, orange, so let's go for that. You can change the patterns on this here. That doesn't look great, but you can do that. And that's great. So you have this guy here. And what you're generally going to want to do is do that for all the nodes there. That can take some time. But while you're looking at this, you can change the node size to make it easier uh, to look at and to distinguish. While you're editing it, you can change the font size of the haplogroups groups in case you're having a trouble seeing where they are. So when you're done editing your network, it should look like this crazy beast here. Uh, some networks will be more complex than others, depending on the age of the uh, haplogroup you're dealing with. Uh, ours is pretty old, so um, it looks a little uh, insane, but awesome. So, Thank you for joining the super awesome team members of Team 5 Prime to 3 Prime. We've loved having you. Good luck. Um, uh, um, um, uh, um, um, uh, 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 um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 um, um, uh, 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 um, 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 um